Hi, my name is Yasmin and I'm in the Made in Hackney local food kitchen and today I'm going to be showing you how to make seasonal kimchi. So the most important thing when preserving or jam making is you need everything to be as clean as possible. So your hands, any utensils you're using and especially the jars or containers that you'll be storing your preserve in. The first process of that is to leave them in some hot soapy water just to soak for a little while. And then once we've done that, we rinse them off and then we move them to the oven and we're going to sterilise them in the oven at 140 degrees uh, for 20 to 30 minutes. So today we're going to be making kimchi. And kimchi is a traditional Korean ferment and it's becoming quite popular in Britain. And it's super easy to make and super cheap to make as well. Today we're going to be using carrots, cabbage, turnips and kohlrabi. And um, that's because they're in season at the moment in the UK. Uh, but you can change your kimchi all throughout the year whenever you make it, uh, depending on whatever kind of hard, uh, firm vegetables are in season. So the night before, you want to chop up your vegetables and put them in some brine. And brine is basically about two litres of water to six tablespoons of salt. And we just want to slice everything in kind of chunky pieces. We're going to put our vegetables in the brine and leave it overnight with a plate to weigh it down. So here's our vegetables that we soaked in brine for eight hours. Um, and we used a lid to weigh down the top just to help the vegetables kind of stay in the brine. And you can have massive pieces of vegetables or you could have slightly smaller ones, whatever takes your fancy. We want to save our brine because we're going to use that for our kimchi paste. So down here I have another bowl with a sieve on top and I'm just going to pour the brine and vegetables into there. So the next step is to make our kimchi paste and that's super easy. All we're going to do is we're going to get 50 grams of ginger, 5 cloves of garlic, 5 red chilies, and a tablespoon of chilli powder and we're just going to whiz it up in a mixer. So I'm just going to peel the ginger. A good tip for peeling ginger is to use a teaspoon. Um, sometimes people use a healer and you end up just taking off half the bit of ginger with it. So a teaspoon is a good way to do it. And because it's going in the food processor, you know, you just need rough chunks really. Always remember to be careful with chilies. Once you touch them, wash your hands straight away because you will touch your face and it will sting and it will hurt. Contrary to popular belief, it's not the seeds that are the chilies part of the chilli. It's the membrane just here. So if you were ever cooking something where you wanted the chilli taste, but not the hot spiciness, you'd remove this area. But we want things to be quite spicy. So I'm just going to roughly chop them. And we're just going to blitz this up. And then we're going to slowly add a bit of the brine that we reserved from earlier um, to loosen up. Always start with less liquid than you think you're going to need. So I'm just adding kind of a tablespoon at a time. So that's quite a good consistency. <laughs> Your kimchi paste is going to be really strong, so try not to inhale it. So now what we want to do is we're just going to put our chilli paste into our vegetables and then we're going to massage the paste into the vegetables with our hands. So it's really important if you've got any cuts or grazes on your hands to wear gloves because it will go into your fingers and it will hurt a lot and it won't be very hygienic either. If we're massaging for about a few minutes you're also softening the vegetables because remember they're not cooked. And there we go. And then straight away wash your hands with some soapy water. So now, the kimchi, you need to let it breathe. So you need to leave about a four centimetre gap up the top. And you're kind of pushing down the vegetables as you go along. Because you don't really want too many gaps. And I'm just going to push all this down again. And this is a two litre the parfait jar. Um, so it's perfect for kimchi because you want a big jar to start off with kimchi. And then we're going to decant it into smaller jars. We're going to leave our jar of kimchi at room temperature for four to eight days. 
And it's really important that you burp your kimchi, similar to sauerkraut, you burp your kimchi every day. And that just involves just opening your jar, letting some air out, and once all the air is gone, you can close it up again. If you don't burp your jar every day, your jar will explode. So it's very important. And every four days you can taste your kimchi just for sourness and taste. And once it's got to the flavour that you like, then you can decant it to a smaller jar. As you can see, the vegetables will look more softened and they will kind of stuck together a bit more. And then we can close that up and that's the jar that can, that can stay in the fridge. And it will last for about nine months.